looking forward to uh, the process. Uh, another thing I want to bring up, I uh, don't want to get too far into this without mentioning it. Uh, this is a big weekend uh, last weekend with re regards to all the graduates that uh, were graduating from high school, college, uh, and it's important to notice and acknowledge all of those uh, graduates here in our community because hopefully we'll continue to uh, grow more graduates in Topeka and they'll stay here and add to the uh, population of trained, skilled labor and help us grow our community. So I thank them and congratulate them for everything they've done to, but their, for their accomplishments. Um, I also want to recognize that uh, our own uh, city manager, Bill Cochran, and one of our employees, uh, Hannah Ulrig, were participants in the most recent Leadership Greater Topeka, and they too had a graduation ceremony, I think it was last week. Uh, uh, maybe, Bill, you can give us an idea of what you got out of that experience. Well, it was, uh, it was a very exciting time. One of the things that I appreciated the most was uh, I thought I knew a lot about the city of Topeka, but how much you learn about the city of Topeka is really impressive. And what's really interesting is you uh, meet a lot of business and a lot of business leaders in the city of Topeka that are doing things not only at the national level, but the international level. So um, really learn a lot about the city of Topeka, and I would encourage anybody who has the opportunity uh, to go through that to go through it. And uh, and uh, learn a lot more about the city of Topeka and, and what a wonderful city we do have. Mm -hmm. it, you know, I went through the program too some years ago and I agree that even though you're born and raised in Topeka, you just don't know the depth of everything that's going on in the city. So that program really is an eye opener for anyone who ever gets an opportunity to participate. So when that next time and next round of uh, applications come up, consider uh, sending somebody uh, from your corporation or yourself uh, taking the opportunity to uh, learn what you can from that program. It's a great program put on by Leadership Greater Topeka and uh, Michelle Stubblefield does an excellent job of managing that program. I want to make sure one more uh, acknowledgement that we have because uh, I think it's important that we acknowledge the compliments of our city employees. Uh, our finance director Stephen Wade also graduated uh, along with his daughter. Uh, from KU, uh, Stephen completed his MPA uh, uh, program and received his degree, and I think it was in two years that he was able to accomplish that. So that, that is quite a feat, and I uh, congratulate him for that as well. Um, another thing I want to speak to a little bit, and the city manager also can uh, speak to the city-to-city -city trip that we took recently with members from Lawrence, Kansas. Um, we had a real opportunity to, I guess, change how we begin to look at how we do business in Topeka and regionally. Um, we had a good group, I think it was about what, 135 or so, with about 30 or so, 35 people from Lawrence, including their mayor. Uh, I purposefully set out to meet as many people from Lawrence as I could. I spent a lot of time visiting with their mayor, Mayor Shipley, and had a good time talking about issues that we have in common uh, with regards to city management. Uh, and I think we had an overall theme that maybe a city manager can speak to with regards to how they collaborate. Yeah, I think one of the best things that uh, I learned and I think other people learned from this recent trip was we, we we get caught up in the competitive world and the aspect that, hey, we need this and, and we need to make sure Lawrence doesn't get it or Manhattan doesn't get it uh, or whatever that is. Uh, and the mindset of this whole trip was trying to change that paradigm and that thinking to get us to think regional. You know, if Lawrence gets something and we don't, how the city of Topeka can still benefit from that and how you uh, build those partnerships to where that happens. And the same with Manhattan. When you think about this area, uh, you know, within a very short distance, you have Lawrence, Topeka, and Manhattan right along I-70, as well as Junction City. And so what we really need to visualize or take into consideration is a regional concept as opposed to a city concept, and how when somebody does get something great, okay, how can we also benefit off of that? 
And so it's building those partnerships and uh, relationships so that when opportunities arise, it may be competitive at, at first, but then once it's decided where something goes, then how do we work together so everybody benefits from it? Yeah, and I, I mean, that was the overall theme that we heard. Uh, and to follow up on that, and it kind of shows how uh, these trips produce work. Uh, it's not just a, a time together. Um, we pulled together a meeting uh, inviting Shawnee County uh, legislative body at the State House, um, the council members, and the mayor from Silver Lake and the mayor from Auburn. And that's our region, that's our legis Shawnee County legislative group. And we brought them together to start that conversation and regular communication about how things can come together, how we are in fact looking out for each other. We're, we want to walk away from that competitive uh, attitude so that if you can't have it, I can't have it. We really want to make sure that we encourage growth in our region because Topeka will benefit from that as well, as well as Silver Lake and Auburn. So we brought that meeting together and I have had nothing but good feedback from the participants. So we plan on doing that again. Probably, uh, I'm sure we will do it before the next legislative session uh, so that we again can talk about what our mutual needs are and get our legislative delegation listening to us, working for us, and uh, hopefully it'll help um, progress in this whole region. Uh, so I'm really pleased about that and I thank the uh, legislators who took the time to show up and visit with us. It was very enlightening. Uh, so it was, a, it was a good effort. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about too uh, and that is TAPS Across America. I don't know if people are aware of that effort. Uh, we have uh, Memorial Day coming up next Monday, the 30th, and I think that for three years now, CBS has been uh, kind of the sponsor for this effort, and uh, particularly with a veteran like uh, the city manager here and veterans who work for the city of Topeka, it's important for us to acknowledge their service and their contribution to our country and TAPS Across America is a program where it is encouraged that across the entire United States in your time zone that you recognize the veterans contribution and have somebody in your community or plenty of people in your community play TAPS at three o'clock in your time zone. So not Topeka time zone, Washington time zone, wherever you live when it is three o'clock on Memorial Day that you have people encouraged to play taps. And that is to acknowledge the contribution across America for all Americans who have served uh, in all ways, not just in combat time, but right now in peacetime. Um, there are a lot of our um, servicemen who are deployed now. Um, they, some of them are in combat, some are not. Uh, but it's important for us not just to remember those who have passed, but those who continue to serve our country right now. Uh, so I encourage people to go to um, this is a CBSN New, uh, CBSnews.com slash taps. If you look at that, you'll get a video that will show that effort. And for me anyway, uh, when you look at it, kind of brings a little uh, chills up your the back of your neck because to see people in all walks of life and not just uh, with a horn instrument they're using guitars violins whatever to play taps in recognition of the contributions of our veterans um, along that line uh, I want us to remember what the veterans did to help preserve democracy in our country what they fought for. And one of those things is very important and it's upcoming, and that is registration to vote. That is a basic right for our, our citizens. Um, our veterans fought for it, continue to fight for that, to keep our democracy in place. And I think it's important for us not to acknowledge their sacrifice and not take advantage of our responsibility to vote in the elections that affect you. Uh, locally, uh, local elections will happen uh, 
uh, that directly affect you at the state level and at the federal level. All of that, you have to have participation in what goes on in our country. And the easiest way is to cast your vote, register to vote, and that voting right now, I think uh, there has been, there have been changes in some of the voting laws across the country, and in Kansas as well. And I hope those changes don't dissuade people from taking the time to vote. There's a deadline, I think, July 17th to get registered, or July 12th, excuse me, to get registered to vote. So keep that in mind. Uh, that's a basic right that has been given to us by the sacrifices of our veterans. So don't waste that right. Make sure you register and do vote in the upcoming elections. I think it's important for us. You can, if you're not sure whether you're registered or eligible to vote in the upcoming elections, you can go to kansasvotes.org. And if you put your name in there, it'll tell you whether you're registered or not. It'll tell you where you can register. So make sure, kansasvotes.org, if you're not sure. Sometimes people will vote in one election and forget about the next one coming up, but that's a quick way to, to ensure that you have that opportunity. Uh, don't let anything get in the way of depriving you of that privilege. So I kind of go off script every now and then, and that's when that I think this is important to use this office and this voice to encourage that civic participation uh, in our community. Um, the last thing I want to visit with is that uh, uh, some time ago, uh, the city manager and I talked about uh, uh, changes that we would like to see uh, in how we do business at the city of Topeka and how we make sure that we're giving serious, considerate, and uh, intentional thought to making sure everybody's included. We are, have been having meetings uh, to help us define how we better serve the community and how we better represent the community ethnically, racially, and by gender as well, uh, by, so that everyone has a voice and an opportunity in our city. So we're working very seriously to bring to the city of Topeka a position that I think will help us enhance all the good things that we're doing already. And maybe city manager, without giving us a lot, a lot of detail, maybe you can speak to how we've reached out to other groups so that we make sure we're not uh, creating this idea in a vacuum. Yeah, certainly. Uh, so one of the things that we are looking at is uh, creating the position of the diversity, equity, and inclusion officer. And what that individual will do will help uh, move the city to speak forward internally in how we become more inclusive and how we train uh, all of our employees from top to bottom and how we change that mindset of what inclusion really means. And so actually pretty exciting working on this position. Uh, we've talked to Stormont Vale Behavior Health, or, or Stormont Vale uh, Hospital. We've talked to Evergy. And just today we met with uh, the DEI person from Washburn University. So one of the things is we're really reaching out, trying to get an understanding of how this works uh, in the private sector as well as the public sector and uh, working on what this position really looks like. And so we're getting to the point where hopefully we'll have the position description done and that we'll be getting this position uh, posted and start recruitment for that position. But uh, I think it's going to be an exciting time for the mm -hmm. city of Topeka and really an opportunity for us to start moving the city to people forward. Thank you. Um, I think those are the items that I wanted covered. Uh, Bill, did you have something that I did not touch I on? I just got a couple things. Uh, battle the badges today, the oh, yeah. blood draw. Uh, see the chief is here and Major Cross representing each one of the police department and fire department. But that goes till three o'clock at the Holiday Building. So if you wanna donate blood for a good cause, that opportunity is there until three o'clock this afternoon. Uh, and then really, I think the only other thing I have is just a reminder that off city offices are closed Monday, May 30th uh, for Memorial Day. Thank you. Any questions that we have? Well, thank you for being here today, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to the community. Thank you.